This morning I was listening to Rick Rubin reading his new book, The Creative Act, and this part stuck out to me. He said, quote, In the culture, there's always a dialogue between the past, the present, and the future. Even when it's not clear what the influence is, as creators and enthusiasts, we share and receive points of view in order to participate in and further this exchange. It's a symbiotic loop. The culture informs who you are, and who you are informs your work. Your work then feeds back into the culture. This constant march into the unknown could not exist without the simultaneous sharing of millions of divergent points of view. So on the spot, I brought to mind five photographers whose work has moved and inspired me. I decided to think about how I can incorporate their influence into my work this year. Shomei Tomatsu's photography literally vibrates with life and energy. There's a pulse to his images. He's in the thick of things. It feels like he's always moving, looking, exploring, observing. This year, I'll channel his energy and electricity. Roy De Carava was one of, if not the best low light photographer ever. He embraced the shadows. He let them wash over his scenes. We have to let our eyes adjust to fully see his images. And once we do, we feel like we're there with him in moments of music and dance or quiet solitude. I've always embraced low light and considered myself skilled at photographing in the dark, but De Carava makes me want to dive deeper into these moments. The photos of Sabine Weiss are full of emotion. They capture an amazing sense of place and time. They transcribe the wonder and magic of a three-dimensional world into a two-dimensional medium. I want to translate my feelings into images the way that she does. The photography of Graziella Iturbide exists between planes. When I see her photos, I feel certain there's more going on in the world than what we can see with our eyes. I'm not sure how she physically occupies this space, but she is undeniably transcendent. Her work makes me feel like I can visit a spiritual place and document it with my camera. I have no idea how that will manifest, but I'm excited to find out. Trent Park's photos look distinctly Trent Park. He's in cities and suburbs, beaches and the countryside, but nothing looks quite like what we expect to see. His black and white is high contrast and dynamic. His subjects might be almost completely invisible, cloaked in shadows or blown out highlights. Streets are occupied by people we can't fully see, making us feel like we are anywhere and nowhere simultaneously. What I want is to be able to say that first sentence about my work, Zach Dobson's photos look distinctly Zach Dobson. Which photographers have been front of mind for you recently? What have you learned from them? Tell me in the comments.